Alright guys, I'm back with my review of the WWE Royal Rumble 2013. And overall, I thought it was an okay show. Maybe a little disappointing for the Royal Rumble. I like the Royal Rumble match itself. I like Punk vs. Rock. Um, but it felt like the rest of the show, you could see that on Raw or any other pay-per-view. So that was a little disappointing. Maybe I just expected too much. I don't know. I did like some of the surprises in the Rumble. I didn't expect those at all. Um, so yeah, I did think it was an okay show, but maybe a little bit lacking for one of their big shows of the year. Uh, but at least this year's Rumble was much better than last year's, in my opinion. And it wasn't full of guys like JTG, Alex Riley, or any names like that. So that was definitely an improvement. It starts off with the pre-show, Cesaro versus Miz for the U.S. title. Cesaro wins with the neutralizer, which Miz kind of did a sloppy job taking. Um, but I expect this feud to continue. Uh, they will probably have Cesaro drop the title to Miz at WrestleMania and then have Cesaro win this year's Money in the Bank and hopefully push him into the main event level. Um, I think he's great, he's got a lot of talent, and he's definitely a guy they could use to carry the company in the future. So, for right now, I feel that the belt is helping Cesaro establish himself more as a heel, doing the whole, I'm the U.S. champion, but I think America sucks gimmick, and eventually he won't need that anymore. So for right now, it makes sense to keep the belt on Cesaro, at least until WrestleMania. Del Rio versus Big Show, last man standing for the world title, First match on the show. Um, Del Rio bumps into Bret Hart backstage. Hart tells him that he reminds him of a Mexican Bret Hart. And he gives Ricardo his sunglasses. So in the match, Del Rio and Big Show fight up the entranceway. And Big Show hits Del Rio with a light bulb. He pulls it out and I was like, oh my god, is that a light tube? Are they going to do like a deathmatch spot here? Of course, without the blood. And it didn't break. So it was pretty lame. And Big Show sets up a table. He climbs to the top of this structure at the entrance. And he chokeslams Del Rio off it through the table. And Del Rio still gets up after this. I thought that should have been kind of like a final spot. I didn't really care for the actual finish. But Del Rio... Or Big Show charges Del Rio. He goes through the barricade. Del Rio crushes his arm between the steps with a chair. And he sprays him with a fire extinguisher. And Del Rio puts him in the armbar, and Ricardo duct tapes Big Show's feet to the ropes. So Big Show can't get up, Del Rio wins. That was it, that was the finish. Uh, didn't care for that too much. I guess it was something a little bit different, but still. I mean, it's the same, the handcuff bit, anything like that. And I don't know, I just thought it was kind of ridiculous that this big giant has been duct taped to the rope. So Dolph, AJ, and Big E are backstage, and... Dolph is pissed that Vicky screwed him over, so he's just going to pick number one since he's number one, and one and two are basically the same anyway. And Big E does this lame-ass voice, acting like he's interviewing Dolph Ziggler. It was very strange. And Dolph says he's going to win the Rumble, cash in, and unify the titles at Mania. Show off. He did it again. Um, some promos, promos from the Rumble wrestlers. Road Scholars versus Team Hell No for the tag titles. It actually says that my Ziggy is trending worldwide during this match. But Kane chokeslams Cody. Daniel Bryan makes Sandow tap to the no lock for the win. That was pretty much the match. I don't know. I, I wasn't really into this one. And I'm surprised they lost after all this time waiting for their title shot. And all of this build. The only thing I can think of that would have kept them from putting the titles on Road Scholars is that maybe they want to do, which I was, I heard was rumored last year they wanted to do, is maybe they want to do Cody versus Goldust at WrestleMania. That's the only reason I would see them not wanting to put the titles on Road Scholars. So Vicky gives Kane and Daniel Bryan their numbers for the Rumble, and Kane won't show Daniel Bryan his numbers, so they start arguing. And then it's the Rumble match. Dolph comes out. He's cutting a promo about how he's going to win the Rumble. He doesn't care who number two is. And number two is Chris Jericho. This was a total surprise to me. Did not expect this at all. I tried to avoid the dirt sheets falling or leading up to the Royal Rumble because one of the main things I enjoy is all this guest spots and surprises here. And 
Seeing Jericho come out was awesome. I really, really got into this. Uh, couldn't believe it. So I guess they're going to continue this feud with Dolph Ziggler and Chris Jericho, which should be great. And I'm sure he's going to do some stuff making fun of Big E and AJ and everything. But yeah, Chris Jericho was number two. And it's I got a lot of stuff written down here. It's hard for me to do a review of a Royal Rumble match. I've only done two videos on Royal Rumbles before. And... I haven't really watched a lot of videos of other people doing them, so I'm just going to do it my way. I don't know. It's a weird thing. But Cody's number three, and <clears throat> Jericho gets him in the Lion Tamer. Kofi Kingston is number four. Santino is five. And Cody eliminates Santino. Drew McIntyre um, and Titus O'Neil are up next. Jericho eliminates McIntyre with a drop kick. And then number eight is Goldust. Goldust came back, which was another really awesome surprise I did not expect. It actually, before the music or anything, it just comes up on the screen, Shattered Dreams Productions or something. And I was like, oh my god, it's Goldust. So that was really cool. And both times, when it was Jericho's music and Goldust's music, I kept thinking, is this somebody in like a costume? Like, was it going to be someone making fun of uh, Chris Jericho with Dolph Ziggler, and Dolph's going to laugh at it. Um, but it was Jericho and Goldust, so that was really cool. So, then it's Otunga, he's Slater, Sheamus. Sheamus takes out Otunga, Lord Tensai at 12, then Brodus Clay. Cody and Goldust fight on the apron, and Cody eliminates Goldust. So, hopefully, it would be really awesome to get a Cody Rhodes-Goldust feud. I would like to see that. Mysterio is out at 14. He returned, which was cool. Um, Darren Young, and they all team up to eliminate Brodus Clay. Kofi takes out Tensai, and then Dolph kicks Kofi off of the apron, and he lands on Tensai's back, so his feet don't touch the floor. And Tensai drops him on the announce table and just starts punching him, and the refs get him out of there, and then Kofi stands on the announce table, and I'm not exactly sure what was supposed to happen here. Um, it looked like, to me, I have absolutely no idea, but it looked like Kofi had maybe practiced jumping from the announce table to the apron and was able to pull it off. But here he looked down and realized, this isn't going to work. I can't do this. And I thought maybe he would jump on the barricade and run to the steps and get in the ring or something like that. But instead... It looked like he had to improvise, so he told JBL to give him his chair, and JBL looked legit surprised at this. But he gives him his chair, and he uses JBL's chair to bounce himself back to the ring, and it worked. So I was pretty impressed by that, and I was just thinking, my god, please do not let this chair fall over, because that's going to be so embarrassing. But he pulled it off. Um... He eliminates Darren Young, but then Cody Rhodes kicks him in the head, and he's immediately out again. So it was all that work for nothing. Bo Dallas won the NXT tournament, so he comes out. Godfather is 17, and Godfather comes out, and I was kind of excited. I'm not, I wasn't like freaking out or anything like I was with Goldust or Chris Jericho. But Godfather comes out. He gets in the ring, and I think Dolph Ziggler just like drop kicks him right back out. So, Godfather leaves. Music never stops playing. And I think the reason this one wasn't really impressive at all wasn't the fact that he was immediately eliminated. It's just, with somebody like Goldust and Chris Jericho, you can feel that they may potentially do something with these guys again. Like, they could put Jericho in a feud with Dolph Ziggler, which I think they're going to do, and Cody against Goldust. But Godfather was just there to be, hey, the Godfather with a couple of hoes, and get eliminated in one second, and that was it. So it was, it was almost like a wasted spot. And I know everybody was saying all week it's going to be Shelton Benjamin and Carlito, which really wouldn't impress me that much, but they would have still been better choices than The Godfather. That's just my opinion. So Wade Barrett is number 18. John Cena is 19. And another thing about this Rumble, as it progressed towards the last few numbers, like around 27, I was like, okay, lucky number 27, it was Jinder Mahal. And then it just, like 29 was Sin Cara. And stuff like that was just kind of weak, but Cena's 19, 
They all gang up on Cena, but of course he's out there to maybe clean up the ring a little bit. And he gets rid of Cody and Heath Slater. Sandow is 20. Barrett takes out Mysterio. Daniel Bryan is 21. Then it's Cesaro, Great Kali, Kane, and Zack Ryder. Kane eliminates Kali. Daniel Bryan eliminates his partner Kane. And then Daniel Bryan gets knocked outside and Kane catches him, but instead of helping his partner back in the ring, he just drops him. So Orton is 26, and Orton RKO Zack Ryder, eliminates him. Jinder Mahal is 27. Cena eliminates Cesaro. Miz is 28. Miz starts brawling with Cesaro on his way back, so definitely continuing that feud. Sin Cara is 29. Bo Dallas eliminates Wade Barrett, but Barrett comes back, helps Bo Dallas get eliminated, and then bull hammers him. Ryback is 30, so no shield, no Brad Maddox. And that was kind of disappointing. You didn't even see the shield on the show, to be honest with you. Um, but, yeah, I, I could have swore that the shield was supposed to be in this match, but I guess not. So Ryback comes out, and he starts eliminating everyone. Ziggler eliminates Jericho, and... It comes down to Cena, Sheamus, Orton, Ryback, and Ziggler. Orton starts delivering RKO's, and Ryback clotheslines him out. Sheamus bro kicks Dolph out. Sheamus goes to bro kick Ryback. Ryback catches him and tosses him out, and it's down to Cena and Ryback. Cena gets him into an STF at one point, but Ryback gets out, and Cena clotheslines him over. So Cena wins the Royal Rumble, and... I'm not really surprised in my predictions video. I did predict this happening, um, but I am a little surprised that they made the show just so predictable. It would have been nice to have a few surprises, and I felt like Cena winning we all saw coming, or at least most of us, and same thing with the Rock Punk match. So, I don't know. Nothing really surprising here. They could still switch things up for WrestleMania, but as for of right now, I was just kind of surprised they went with Cena going over here. I mean, he definitely did not need this win. So, Rock cuts a promo. He's busted up blood. He kept saying that. And he says he doesn't quit. He's, uh, he's ending Punk's reign tonight, and the people do count. So it's Punk versus Rock for the WWE title. And Punk counters the rock bottom, but Rock gets him in a sharpshooter. Rock tries to hit the rock bottom on the announce table. What bad luck this guy has. I mean, he goes for the rock bottom, and the thing collapses again. I can't remember who it, who the match was against. Was it Kurt Angle or Mick Foley? I can't, I can't remember, but it's happened before with the rock. And I don't know what it is about this move, these tables, whatever... And it reminded me when I said, um, I think it was on Raw, or last week SmackDown, I can't remember. But I mentioned how when Del Rio beat Big Show, he had to struggle to push the announce table over. And these things collapse when someone bumps into them. And here you have The Rock and Punk standing on it, and the thing just fucking falls apart. So that was terrible. Looked like shit. But they tried to make up for it. He hits the rock bottom on Punk on the outside anyways, which looked nasty as hell. And Punk, or Rock, goes for the people's elbow, and the lights go out. So all we hear, couldn't see anything, Cole is screaming, It's the shield! The shield just triple powerbombed Rock through the announce table. And he's just screaming and freaking out. And the lights come on, Punk is smiling, he rolls Rock into the ring, pins him, wins the match. So Vince comes out. Didn't expect this. I thought it was over. Vince comes out and says, You can't fool anybody. We know it was the Shield, even though we never saw him. And he's about to strip Punk of the title, and The Rock grabs a microphone, and he's all beat up, and he's like, No, we're not going to take the belt off him that way. I'm going to take it off him. So they restart the match, and Punk attacks Rock, but Rock hits the spine buster and the people's elbow for the win. I was kind of surprised he beat him with the people's elbow, but that's what happened here. So, Rock is the new WWE Champion, and it was sad to see Punk's reign end. Um, I did kind of expect this to happen, but at the same time, I mean, he had the belt for so long, 
He really helped establish this title, made it mean something again, and it's just a little disappointing that it's over now. But yeah, Rock is the champion. It was weird. We didn't get to actually see the shield. No Brad Maddox, nothing like that. So it was kind of a weird finish, but I still enjoyed it. And I'm interested to see what they do with this going forward. I know it looks obvious that it's going to be Cena versus Rock at WrestleMania 2, um, but like I said before, there's a few things they could do here. They could always change it up. And after seeing Jericho and Goldust, I started thinking anything was possible. We could see Brock Lesnar, we could see Undertaker, and as the Rumble went on, it kind of got like just more and more predictable. Like, okay, here's Sinkara 29, and you know Ryback's 30, and I don't know, I would have liked a little bit more surprises in the Rumble. I did like the surprises we got, but a few more would have been nice. And I don't know, going forward, uh, it's going to be awesome because I always like the road to WrestleMania and you know they're going to have to do something with Undertaker soon and they're going to have to do something with Brock Lesnar very soon so it's going to be pretty sweet to see what they do on Raw this Monday but as far as the Rumble goes itself this was an okay show this wasn't a bad Rumble I definitely enjoyed this one more than I did last year's so this was an improvement for me um, so anyways, that's my review of the Royal Rumble 2013. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on the show in the comments, and thanks for watching. Bye. And he's definitely a guy they could use to carry the company in the future. So for right now, I feel that the belt is helping Cesaro establish himself more as a heel, doing the whole I'm the U.S. champion, but I think America sucks gimmick. And eventually he won't need that anymore. So for right now, it makes sense to keep the belt on Cesaro, at least until WrestleMania. Del Rio versus Big Show, last man standing winning. Maybe I just expected too much. I don't know. I did like some of the surprises in the Rumble. I didn't expect those at all. Um, so yeah, I did think it was an okay show, but maybe a little bit lacking for one of their big shows of the year. Uh, but at least this year's Rumble was much better than last year's, in my opinion. And it wasn't full of guys like JTG, Alex Riley, or any names like that. So that was definitely an improvement. It starts off with the pre-show, Cesaro versus Miz for the U.S. title. Cesaro wins with the neutralizer, which Miz kind of did a sloppy job taking. Um, but I expect this feud to continue. Uh, they will probably have Cesaro drop the title to Miz at WrestleMania. And then have Cesaro win this year's Money in the Bank and hopefully push him into the main event level. Um, I think he's great. He's got a lot of talent. Alright guys, I'm back with my review of the WWE Royal Rumble 2013. And overall, I thought it was an okay show. Maybe a little disappointing for the Royal Rumble. I like the Royal Rumble match itself. I like Punk versus Rock. Um, but it felt like the rest of the show, you could see that on Raw or any other pay-per-view. So that was a little disappointing for the world title. First match on the show. Um, Del Rio bumps into Bret Hart backstage. Hart tells him that he reminds him of a Mexican Bret Hart. And he gives Ricardo his sunglasses. So in the match, Del Rio and Big Show fight up the entranceway. And Big Show hits Del Rio with a light bulb. He pulls it out and I was like, oh my god, is that a light tube? Are they going to do like a deathmatch spot here? 